Safety and security of your silver and gold at home is of course of tantamount importance, making sure that you have the right kind of safe that's not easily opened by a three minute YouTube video, or perhaps ensuring your precious metals. These are all decisions that people need to think about and take seriously. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about that very topic of securing your precious metals at home. Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here. Now safety and security of your gold and silver at home is of course a really important topic and I know a lot of silver and gold stackers take this very seriously. Whether you've got an underground bunker with a big old bank vault door or a giant safe or even a tiny safe or perhaps no safe at all, a hidey hole or just buried in the garden, storage and security of precious metals at home is really important. But unfortunately, there is no one quick and easy way to say what is right. There are going to be a whole host of different approaches that are right for different people. And the objective of today's video is to give you all a little bit of an overview of some of the things to think about, some of the critical thinking that I do and have done in the past about security of precious metals at home. This is not a financial advice video. It's not a security advice video. It's not even an insurance advice video. I want to touch on the subject of insuring your precious metals as well. So there are a whole host of different things to think about and I'd love to know your thoughts as we go throughout the video. So please feel free to comment down below and a reminder if you're enjoying the video to thumbs up as well. Now, the first topic I want to talk about is safes. Safes are quintessentially the thing that you would have to secure and store your precious metals at home. What's the threshold though to thinking that you might need or want to have a safe? Well, that's going to be different for various different people. Of course, some people might think that 50 ounces worth of silver is worth getting a pretty hefty duty safe to store it in. Now, it depends on the type of safe and the value and the cost of the safe as well. If you're buying a thousand dollar safe to store $500 worth of precious metals, then that's not necessarily going to be the best cost effective thing. However, of course, forward planning is important. If you plan to buy more precious metals in the future, then there is absolutely nothing wrong with having a $1,000 safe to store your $500 worth of silver. If you plan to buy $500 worth of silver every year, in 10 years, you'll suddenly have quite a lot of precious metals in that safe. So forward planning is important. Um, you know, forward planning in terms of safe size, I think is a, a really interesting topic. I know from uh, a f you know personal experience that some of the smaller safes that are out there in this world, um, maybe not suitable for a lifetime's worth of stacking, I guess is the answer here. Um, now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you what safe I've got. Nobody should tell you what safe uh, you, they've got and what safe you should get. Uh, it's important that you do your own research on the types of safe and the size of safes as well, and also the insurance gradings of safes. Uh, it's also worth checking if you do want to insure precious metals that the safe that you have is approved by your insurance provider as well. And um, there are a whole host of different options out there. Uh, the one piece of advice, the key piece of advice that I would give to anybody out there who is looking to get hold of a safe is just for God's sake, don't buy one that is on YouTube being opened in three seconds. If you've seen a safe that you like the look of, it fits in your budget, it looks good uh, for everything that you want to achieve, just have a quick Google of it, have a quick YouTube of it. See if there's a video of somebody opening it within three seconds because the last thing you want is somebody breaking into your house, uh, you're not in, and then they just get their phone out, quickly Google it, bish bash bosh, done, off they go. The whole point of a safe is to delay. It is not to keep out. Safes are, it's really important this because a lot of people think safes are infallible. They are uh, the bee's knees of securing your silver at home. But actually they're really not because every single safe on the planet can be opened. Uh, unless you're you know, in some kind of vault in Switzerland or Fort Knox, every single safe can be opened. It just takes time and experience and tools. And if you have an opportunistic burglar or thief that breaks into your house, perhaps when you're not around, the whole point of a safe is to put them off long enough or to make them make enough noise that perhaps the neighbors hear or there's enough time for you, perhaps your alarm system to have picked them up. And then of course the emergency services can get involved and get arriving. The whole point is to delay them enough that they then can't be bothered or they go and they take something else, the more opportunistic side of things. Now to have 
a situation where somebody really is super prepared for what you've got. They're going to have to know, obviously, a few things, what kind of safe you've got, where it is, all of the different access points, how to get in it. Uh, you know, there's a whole host of different scenarios there that they need to run through before going in. And that, of course, is only really accessible from your own side of things in terms of security. Now, I did a video a couple of weeks ago all about buying and security when buying precious metals and making sure that you're uh, safe and secure with your own holdings and not bragging about it down the pub, telling mates, sharing things on photos, you know, photos on social media, which can be easily tracked and traced back to you. You know, there's a whole host of different things which start right at the front. But that also goes for the purchasing and installation of safes. If you're going to buy a safe, make sure it's from a reputable company. Make sure it's not from a company, you know, Joe Blog Safes. We want to install your safe so that we know you've got one and then we can come back or we can sell your information off to the highest bidder on the dark web. You know, there are a whole host of different horror stories that you hear about that. And just the simple act of buying a giant, great big safe like that, that's perhaps you've gone to your local uh, or, you know, bought online from a precious metal safe specialist. Um, what if they're hacked? What if somebody finds their data? What if this company's sold to the highest bidder and they get access to your data? And perhaps there's blueprints even of where your safe is in the house and how it was installed and all the different measures that are there to protect it. You know, those things are really important to factor in um, in your decision making process. So yes, safes are good. Safes are fantastic at that opportunistic you know, it's like summer right now here in the UK, it's super hot. Everybody's got their doors and windows open or unlocked, back doors. People are spending a lot of time in gardens uh, or just cooling off in uh, paddling pools in the back garden, whatever it might be. Um, you know, if the front door's open or if there's a window open, opportunistic guy is going to come in. He's going to see phones. He's going to see laptops. He's going to see tablets. He's going to swipe whatever he can quickly. Of course, if he sees a really great big gold bar sitting on the table, that's a danger sign. If it's in a safe, it's hidden away. That's less obvious. It takes time. It takes you know these people are in and out in seconds, and they go for what they see. So having a safe delays that is great. But being conscious about where you keep things within the house is also just as good. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why I've got some of these big chunky monkey bars out here. So here we have a uh, hundred and approximately. 41-ish ounces worth of silver. That's a big, heavy, volumetric area, and being careful not to drop it all here and really destroy my table. That's a big chunk of storage of silver. Now, it's bloody heavy as well, let me tell you, for uh, holding one-handed. That takes up space, and if you don't have a space, uh, safe, or if you don't necessarily believe in the security of safes, which I want to talk about in a moment as well. If somebody breaks in whilst you're in, a safe is completely useless. In fact, it's a liability. But an equivalent amount of gold compared with that giant mess of silver um, is just two ounces worth of gold. Now, this is slightly over two ounces because this uh, 50 pesos is a big old chunky monkey gold coin. But the point here is two gold coins. Put those in your pocket, put those in a hideaway. Hide it away in a creative and unique place is, I think, really... Um, in my opinion, pretty safe and secure compared with uh, a safe, you know? And this is where we come on to the fallibility of safes. If you're in when somebody breaks in, if somebody puts a gun or a knife to your head and says, open that safe or it's lights out, of course you open the safe. Now, I know a lot of my viewers are US based and a lot of my viewers are not just US based, but they're very much Second Amendment, um, Believers that are very much about home security and defense. I want to park that situation to one side because there's always a lot of... I want to be careful with my words here. There's always a lot of bravado, a lot of, yes, in this situation, I will do this. I will act this way. But when those situations truly come to pass, uh, it is very, very difficult to know how anybody would act and react. And here in the United Kingdom as well, we have very different laws about home security and home defense. So... From that perspective, for most people, I would say, in the world, if somebody breaks in in the middle of the night and you're in and they get the jump on you, you are taken hostage. The safe is all of a sudden not safe. It's a liability. If somebody tells you, open that safe now or it's lights out, I know from it's open safe time, it is as fast as possible, open that safe, on you go, thank you very much. That, you know, it's, it's a no-brainer for me. It is just 
100% open the safe time. So it's completely next to useless. Now, if you have a decoy safe, that's a really good thing. So consider that. Multiple safes. Have a big old one somewhere that's obvious, or not necessarily obvious in your front room, but one that they will find, perhaps in a bedroom or something. And then have another safe somewhere, hidden away, that's very hard to find, as hard as find as possible. In that situation, perhaps they will only find the one safe, and when you open that and it's got maybe a couple of hundred ounces of your stack, give them that, off they go. Whew, job done, maybe. I mean, it's still a liability, but that's something to think about. Of course, if they find both safes, I'm opening both safes. But the point here is that a safe is very, very much a liability in those situations. It really is. So just factor that in. It's not infallible in any way, shape or form. But in that situation, of course, having hideaways of your silver and gold works even better than a safe. And if you've got, my point here, two ounces worth of gold, just two gold coins hidden away somewhere very creatively then that is surely going to be better and easier to hide than the huge bulky volume of this stuff here. I mean, you could even, there's so many different creative spaces that you can do. Now, one thing I will always say is if you've ever watched, uh, you know, the sort of the crime programs when they uh, search somebody's home and they find anything and everything behind wall sockets and things like that, try and get super creative because if you can think of where to hide something, then somebody else can think of it as well. That's something really important. I think a lot of people always go, ha ha ha, that's so unique. Nobody's ever gonna find it there. And then they do. And you know, it's it's really, it's, I think it's surprising to some people quite how fast these kind of hideaway spots can be found by those that are motivated. Uh, so that's definitely something to, to factor in for sure. Um, there's you know, two sides to every story, two sides to every coin. To coin a phrase, you know, people who uh, have safes often believe that the safe is the most safe place for everything to be. And if it's not in the safe, then it's not secure. And to have the idea of having something unsecured in a different part of the house, perhaps hidden away, is, you know, in their mind, not something that's very practical for them. That's fine. That that's, works for certain people. But as I said right at the start of this video, what is right for some is not necessarily right for others. So that is most certainly something to factor in. Now, the last portion of this video I want to talk about is insurance. Now, insurance is a really interesting and also a little bit of a contentious topic and one that I want to kind of be quite careful on because I don't really want to be giving like insurance advice. I don't want to really tell anybody that they should or should not be getting insurance. I think that really the best thing to do is to be talking with perhaps, uh, you know, your insurance providers about what they can perhaps provide uh, in those kind of circumstances. But um, from a nuts and bolts perspective, from top level perspective, insurance is of course there to protect in the event of the worst case scenario, uh, not just against theft, but also you know if your house uh, burns down or collapses. I remember back when I got started, I saw a video of a chap in Canada and if anybody can remember this or share it, um, it'd be fantastic. He, his house burned down, he had a whole bunch of gold and silver in it. Um, he had insurance, his insurance company paid out uh, a certain amount of his gold and silver value that he was able to prove. And then he went metal detecting in the melted ruins of his house and he recovered a whole bunch of different lumps of precious metal which he sent off for refining and sale and ended up um, maybe, you know, making a little bit of extra cash on the side by just metal detecting in his own home. So, uh, you know, insurance is definitely there to protect you and there for that peace of mind. Um, but I've always been, you know, of the mind as well that insurance companies uh, are there to make money. They're there not to pay out. And there's always, you know, the thing in the back of my mind for any insurance, whether it be car or travel or anything, about the what ifs, something doesn't go right. And I have heard horror stories of people who've had precious metal insurance and they've been broken into, but the insurance companies, they just haven't paid out because there's no proof of what was in the safe. And I have heard that various insurance companies, um, you know, there are certain levels of insurance that people have for precious metals or, uh, you know, valuables or jewelry and stuff within their own home insurance policies. But if you go above and beyond those types of levels and you haven't told your insurer, it voids the entire policy. So everything's not insured then suddenly. Or if you then go above and beyond to insure specific individual items of particular values, you've got to be able to prove that you a, had it. Uh, of course, this stuff here is incredibly liquid. So what's to say that you've um, you've got this gold coin, you sell it on a Wednesday, you're broken into on a Thursday, and you go to your insurance company and say, no, 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 this was sold. And you, you know, you sold it to Joe Bloggs down the pub for cash. You've got this 
big wad of cash in your house, but there's no way the insurance company can prove that you haven't got it. So that's their argument. You know, you've got to prove that you had it. And a lot of the time, I've heard people say that insurance companies require you to have, you know, dated photographs of your precious metals almost every week on a weekly basis to prove that you had it then at that point. Um, you know, there are this whole host of different hurdles to go through. Another thing about personal security and privacy is again, you know, you you're telling another individual, telling another organization about your precious metals. You're telling them where and how they're secured. You know, a lot of these insurance companies, if you've got a safe, they'll want to know the exact type of safe. They'll want to know its insurance rating. They'll need to know every other piece of security information about your home. Do you have a home alarm system? All of this information, by the way, you're giving to somebody on the phone, a human being often on the phone. And this is no disrespect to people who work for insurance companies. But from my experience, the vast majority of call handlers in insurance companies tend to be younger individuals in their 20s, sometimes even younger as well. Perhaps they're even on one of their first jobs they've ever done and they don't really, they don't have this volition of caring. And if somebody, I'm not saying everybody, but if there is perhaps a less than scrupulous individual that realizes that he could perhaps sell that information to somebody else for a significant amount of money, you suddenly find yourself in a little bit of a danger point and that's definitely another thing to factor in. Now this is in no way me saying that you should not insure your precious metals. It's again down to everybody's own personal individual circumstances about what is right for them. Now of course I don't want to like say feel free to comment with your own security solutions, what you've got and what you do. Don't tell people what you've got and what you do. You know, there's a reason why I haven't done a video showing my safe. Make sure that when you get a safe, you make sure you've not got one that's easily to open, like on YouTube. There's a great YouTube channel called The Lockpicking Lawyer, which has so many different bits and bobs and safes that are opened within seconds. And it's so, so scary. Uh, and I'll leave you with this one last little anecdote. I mean, I, I know I've been rambling for a long time, but I once locked myself out of my house. I uh, had the house key inside, shut the door. It was that oh no moment. Oh, damn. So phoned a locksmith to come out and open my door. And I kid you not, this locksmith took longer to choose the tool to which he used to open my door than it took to open the door. It took him about six or seven seconds to open the door and he maybe took about 20 seconds to work out which tool to use. He just poof, straight through in seconds. Very scary. Security is important. Take it seriously. Understand the limitations of what you can put in place and then act accordingly. That's all I can say. So that is it from me. A big thank you for you all for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Put that thumbs up on it and share it around through your social media. Otherwise, say, stay safe, stay cool as well. It's bloody hot here in the UK at the moment. And we'll see you on the next video. As always, please make sure that you like, share, comment and subscribe for more.